Let's have a look at using the layer blend modes in Affinity Photo, but also they behave the same in Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher. But we're using Photo to demonstrate this, so let's just have a look um, at what we will be doing. Layer blend modes in Affinity Photo can be used to create a wide variety of effects, including adjusting the brightness and contrast of an image, changing the colour of an image, creating shadows and highlights, blending multiple images together, and adding special effects such as glows and, re and reflections. Affinity Photo supports an impressive selection of different blend modes, but the most commonly used blend modes are as follows. Now, normal mode, you can see I've got two images here exactly the same stacked on top of each other. And you might wonder what the benefit of that is. Well, let me show you in this one instance. When you've got normal mode selected, there's your blend mode there, which is right above the layers panel, and normal is selected. You can hide that one, and there's no change because it's exactly the same as the one below it. Now let's try multiply, which is the next one. Multiply is that one there. Multiply is the blending mode which results in a combination of the top and bottom colour at each pixel position, always producing a darker value. So it has the effect of intensifying considerably the image. There's it unapplied, and there it is applied. That's multiply mode. Now the next most common one is the screen mode. You'll see this a lot in different things that you load. There's the screen mode, the opposite of multiply, where the blending result is a combination of the inverse of the top and bottom colours at each pixel position, always producing a lighter value. Now overlay is the next one we're going to look at. Let's find overlay, and there's overlay in the blending mode. It applies either multiple or screen blend mode. Now, let me say that again. It applies either multiply or screen mode, depending on the bottom color of each pixel position. If the bottom layer pixels are less than 50% gray, it multiplies. If they're greater than 50%, it screens. So you can see there the difference. There's not quite as intense as the first one we looked at, but somewhat intense all the same, because it's multiplying and reducing in some cases. Now, divide is the next one we'll look at. Now, this one's quite startling. Lower layers are lightened based on the luminous, luminance, if I can pronounce that correctly, on the upper layer. White has no effect. Lightness is increased progressively by grey through to black. Now let's have a look and see what divide does. It's in there somewhere. There it is there. There's divide. It turns it into, well to all intents and purposes, a fairly raggy edge black and white image. Let me see. That's the divide off and divide layer on. Now the last one of this common list is color burn. This darkens the bottom color pixels relative to the values of the top color pixels. Color burn. And you'll find it right up the top. There's color burn. Now that's a really intense change in the values. Let's have a look by switching off that top layer. And you can see there's the normal layer. And it's beginning to look a little washed out, isn't it? Well, there it is with color burn applied. That's very intense. That's very startling. And you can do a lot with that. Now, there are other blend modes available. And I'll list them darken, darker color, lighten, Lighter Color, Color Dodge, Add, Soft Light, Hard Light, Vivid Light, Pin Light, Linear Light, Linear Burn, Hard Mix, Difference, Exclusion, Subtract, 
hue, saturation, luminosity, color, average, negation, reflect, glow, contrast, negative, and erase, and finally, pass through. I'll list all these and what you can use them for in the description below this video for your convenience. But what I'll do next is go through these all of these shades in detail using this and a number of other images to um, to intensify the lesson. Let's take it back to normal and there we are. Now one of the things that we can do with this before I get on to the full length descriptions I'll take you on a short journey through just applying an underlay as we can see here. Now there's a layer I've put in there, simple rectangle and at the moment its colour is orange. Now it doesn't matter what colour we make that because it won't affect the colour of the image above it because normal blend mode is applied. So let's place it back to orange again and in this case we'll use the first um, option which is multiply and the blending result is a combination of the top and bottom colors at each pixel position, always producing a darker value. However, you can, with that turned on, go to the background color, well, the image, we're calling it background for want of a better thing, and let's apply the multiply option. And you can see there, the underlying image is not high lit there anymore, just the rectangle and it's an orange colored rectangle. Now that's on and off. Of course that one is but there's nothing beneath it so it's the standard color now. Now turn that layer back on and there's your multiply option. That's a, and that's simply over the screen. Now that's much lighter. That's Hurting your eyes brightness, that is. <laughs> now let's go and try overlay. These are all the ones we just tried in the introduction. And all I've got is that simple colored background. However, let me show you what else you can do. You can change the underlying color. By going around Now the background is in overlay. Let's put that in multiply again. There's multiply and all we're doing is changing the background color. So let's go around there, change the color. And you can see the color variations by changing the underlying color with the same mode you can get numerous variations on there. Let's go right back around to there and that's that's startlingly intense. And you'll see I haven't changed that color. I was just moving the color wheel around to get that color. Okay, now we'll go and have a look at the details of all the other options we've got. So let's have a quick look at all the individual uh, blend mode descriptions. Now what I'll do is leave that on normal. You can see it there, but we'll move down the list. Now darken is that one there. We only have to highlight it. You can see that. This blend mode darkens pixels based on the base layer. Darker color, if we go down to darker color, this blend mode darkens pixels based on the darker of the two layers. So if you've got one layer slightly darker than the other, and it's on the bottom, it will be based on that one. And lighten, hmm, almost the opposite actually. This blend mode lightens pixels based on the base layer. And there it's slightly lighter. Lighten color is the further down there. And you can see that's actually lightened the color a little bit. 
This blend mode lightens pixels based on the lighter of the two layers. Now the bottom layer should be exactly the same because it's a duplicate, but it's enough to uh, make it change slightly. Now remember when you're using these that you're creating designs and modifying the images. So if your bottom image was slightly lighter, and you could make it lighter quite easily, then the light and color um, channel, the blend mode, will reflect that. Now color dodge is the next one, and this blend mode brightens pixels based on the base layer. Okay, color dodge, which is the one we're on. This blend mode brightens pixels based on the base layer. Add. This blend mode adds the pixel values of the two layers together. So add mode, there we go, adds the values together. That considerably brightens it and retains the detail. Soft light blend mode creates a soft diffused effect. Now can I see soft light there? There's soft light. There's a softer diffused effect. Hard light, this blend mode creates a hard contrasty effect. Hard light, is that one there? A hard contrasty effect, yes, I can see that. Vivid light, this blend mode increases the contrast of the image. And there it is, it's definitely, that's definitely more contrasty. So, now let's continue on down the list. I'll put this list, remember, in descriptions, in the description area. Pin light, the blend mode creates a high contrast image with bright highlights and deep shadows. And you can see they're all, all these different options are quite distinct and separated. Now, what are we looking for? Pin light, there's pin light. That one there. Linear light, blend mode, creates a linear contrast increase. Linear light, oh, look at that one, quite different. You can get some really startling images here. Hard mix blend mode, creates a hard contrasty effect with bright highlights and deep shadows. Hard mix, it's that one there. That's very hard, very contrasty. Difference, this blend mode subtracts the pixel values of the two layers from each other. Difference, and it creates almost, let's get the mouth pointer out of the way, that creates an almost completely lost my mouse pointer then. What are we up to? Difference. There we go. That's an almost a negative effect. That's quite startling actually, and you could have some fun with an image like that. Exclusion. The exclusion blend mode creates a subtle desaturated effect. Exclusion. There we go. Saturates some colors and removes others. Luminosity blend mode changes the brightness of the base layer based on the brightness of the top layer. There's saturation there. Now, because they're both the same, it's probably not going to affect it that much. Luminosity blend mode changes the brightness of the base layer based on the brightness of the top layer. Not a big deal, not a great deal of difference there. Down to luminosity. Now, the next one is color. There's not a big change there. This blend mode changes the color of the base layer based on the color of the top layer. The next one is average, and this blend mode averages the pixel values of the two layers together. There's average. Oh, yeah, slight change, not a lot. You can see normal is still ticked up the top, but they change in preview as you move down the list. Negation is the next one. Well, that's interesting. This blend mode inverts the colors of the top layer. 
reflect, and this blend mode creates a reflection effect. Hmm, kind of does. Yeah, I can see that. And glow, this blend mode creates a glow effect. Yeah, doesn't seem to be doing much there, does it? Never mind, it's probably the image. Contrast negative. This blend mode negates the contrast of the image. Now that's definitely turned it into a negative, like an old negative film. Erase. This blend mode erases the top layer. And you've got, effectively, a blank image. So if you reduce the opacity of that, you would then see the bottom image sewing through slightly. And pass through is the last one. Blend mode does not blend the two layers together. Now, while looking for pass through, we've discovered that pass through is available in Affinity Designer, but not in Affinity Photo and not in Affinity Publisher. It only appears in Affinity Designer. And that's the that's it there, right at the top of the list for some reason, and it doesn't appear to be in the other ones. But that's okay. It may turn up there eventually. It doesn't appear to do a lot that I can see, because it says this blend mode does not blend the two layers together. Well, there you go. Pass through. So what you see on the top is what you see on the bottom. That's all there is to it. Pass through will only appear in designer. And we're back to normal again. Okay, now that's about it. That's, that's had a quick look at all the blend modes. And you can experiment with that as you like. Go ahead. Make my day. Subscribe.